Hello comrade and welcome to Retro Flashback showcasing game root for new generation. I am Parallax Abstraction and today we play Japan Propaganda Arm Russian Attack for Nintendo system, also arcade system, many home computer and other various things but not Sputnik satellite which is a front to motherland. This game attempts to showcase American pig dog fending off mother Russia invasion in totally unrealistic fashion because he is victorious and we all know that American always fail against mother okay yeah wow I am sorry ladies and gentlemen I have thought about doing an episode on this game for a little while and what can I say I love probably slightly racist fake Russian accents and I thought it would be fun to try one and yeah I'm bad at it but yeah I, I had to give it a shot Anywho, yes, today we are going to be looking at Russian Attack, or as it was known in Japan and Europe, Green Beret, at least in the arcades, which is the version I have access to here. So we're actually going to be looking, uh, we're doing another double bill here. We are going to be looking at both the arcade edition and the NES version, which has some, they have some decent differences between them. They're very similar uh, in many ways, but they have a bit of a, a bit different level design, and they, they play quite a bit differently, so, yeah, this is a game that was, well, produced in the Cold War era, and obviously has a little bit to do with that. Your goal in the arcade version is to rescue prisoners of war that have been captured by the evil invading Russians, and in the NES version, your goal is to find and destroy a secret Russian weapon, because, well... That's what happened in the 80s. So anyway, let's get this going here. This game does have two-player simultaneous co-op, but as usual, I'm by myself here, so we're going to be playing it in single player. I actually like this game a fair bit. It, it is actually fairly challenging. Uh, it's one-hit death like a lot of Konami combat platformers from the era, i.e. Contra or titles like that, as you can see, because as usual, as soon as I start recording, I screw everything up. And it's pretty tough, but I actually like the way this game ramps up its difficulty curve. I find it does ease you into things a little bit more than a lot of similar titles did. Even titles like Contra. Contra gets punishingly hard very quick. And this is certainly not easy from the get-go, but it definitely makes things a little, a little more straightforward. So you're going to see, much like a lot of titles like uh, Ghouls and Ghosts or other types of, of platformers from this era, the game's sort of main method, at least out of the gate, of challenging you is just to throw large numbers of enemies at you on a kind of constant basis. So even if you stand still in this game, you don't ever really get a chance to catch your breath because, as we all know, the Russian army is unending. And this game will send endless waves of enemies at you. So your default weapon is actually not a gun. Your default weapon is a knife. So you have to get really up close and personal with guys, which is kind of neat in its own way. You don't have the opportunity to deal with stuff from a distance. But in this level here, you've seen that those enemies, uh, those sort of... Well, they're not actually any harder, but they're, they're an infrequent enemy, shall we say, is dropping a flamethrower, which can be... Uh-oh which can be really handy because it does things like that. Limited use, of course. You only get three shots of it, so you do only want to use it when you've got a, a good uh, conga line of enemies coming at you. Ugh, screwed that up. I hate those ninja dudes. And so we're back here, and we've checkpointed. So I kind of bombed up my first life, but I'm actually... Uh, got further than I did in my testing there during my other playthrough. So the concept of this game really, I mean, there isn't a ton to it. It's pretty straightforward. But it's quite rewarding, actually, because it is... Wow. Alright. Screw that up there. Because it is fairly challenging, but the base concept is quite simple, and you won't frequently find yourself hitting a wall with this game you'll sort of you, you'll sort of ramp up fairly quickly and you'll you'll get to to you'll find yourself making substantially more progress on each playthrough so the game's very good at sort of rewarding effort in a quick way while still requiring a substantial amount of it in order to to get all the way through it 
which I quite like. So many arcade games were all about just punishing you right out the gate and trying to make you credit feed so much that they would really just be a little unfair and frustrating. And a lot of designers were not very good at, at finding a balance between that, between making something that was hard enough that you would keep feeding money into it, which is obviously what they was their goal in the arcade era, but was also not... Uh, hello. But was also n not so difficult that, you know, you'd put 50 cents into the game and just be like, oh, screw this, this is too hard. Which a lot of games did, and to be fair, even a lot of successful arcade games operated on that model. You know, if they could expect to get, you know, 50 cents to a buck from each person, then they considered that a victory in many cases. But I find the better arcade games were the ones that, that were designed so that they encouraged longer sessions and encouraged repeated play by sort of easing you into things and making the mechanics fairly obvious and, and intuitive up front, but then loading the challenge in further as you went along. And this one was very, very good at that. Very simple concept, but really fun and challenging when you get into it. So I'm going to see if I can get through this first level here. Pile them out. Whee! Oh, yeah. Yeah, screw you, ninja guy. Those ninja guys are nasty because they're not only really fast, but you have to approach them in a very specific way. Alright. First target overcome. Yeah! Love that pause, that pose when he jumps over the fence. He's like, yeah! I'm a super commando. All right. Whoa. So that's the thing. You can... Uh, these gun guys are kind of weird because you can... generally avoid getting shot by them if you're fairly quick when they come on screen. But if not, you've kind of got to think fast. So once again, it's a, it's a different enemy type and the game rewards you for, for quick thinking and quick action. But it's also not required necessarily in order to get through him. So you can see here, we're definitely getting more gun-type enemies. Oh, jeez. And there's how the challenge ramps up. You can see we had a small army coming after me at one time there. And... So the game will sort of reward quick thinking, or if you want to push your luck a little bit, you can do things like that. And of course, these higher level enemies, i.e. not these sort of dumb grunts that are coming at me here, are actually smart enough to scale ladders. And that's where things can get a lot more interesting and hairy really quick. So you already see that I'm having a lot more challenge with this particular level, because the enemies have just sort of really... The game has begun to really dogpile enemies in general, but also higher end enemies as well. Ah, I screwed that up. And it's getting a little bit more little bit more panicky up in here. And that's sort of the general concept of it. I mean, honestly, there's not a lot more to, to show of this game. The idea behind it is very simple, and of course, it being an arcade game, it is also about score attack. The scoring system in this game is pretty good. I mean, it rewards you most certainly for going after large amounts of enemies. I mean, it's a pretty basic system. It's just, you know, the, the points generally come in variants of 100 or 50, depending on what you're, what you're going after. And if you want to hang back a little bit and really go after a large group of enemies, you know, if you want to pace yourself, you can actually score attack in this game by taking your time. Well, I'm not running into mines like that dude did. So you can actually, if you want to pace yourself, you can actually, uh, you know, take the level slowly and kill a lot more enemies, kind of like this, what he's doing here, as you progress through it. And it gives you the opportunity to really score up. But again, I like games that do this. The, the scoring system is optional, and you can either play the game with score first, or you can play the game to just sort of chew your way through it, progress to the end as fast as possible, or you can mix it up. And it kind of gives you that choice. It doesn't force you down one path or the other. It actually gives multiple ways to play, which is what I... I really like games that do that, because a lot of arcade games were not good at, at doing both. They did one or the other, often fairly well, but they tended to shoehorn you down a specific path. And this one gives you, uh, gives you a couple more options. So I think that's pretty cool. But yeah, the, I mean, the arcade version is arguably probably the best one. 
uh, just because it was sort of the original and it was it was done on higher fidelity technology at the time than the home console or home computer versions were. But it's not the only way to play, and there are other versions of this that are pretty good as well. So, we're going to switch over here to the Nintendo Entertainment System version, which is still pretty decent, but is definitely uh, notably, notably different in some key respects. So, hang in there for two seconds, and I'll be right back. And welcome back, comrade. No, 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 I'm not going to be doing that again. I've learned my lesson. I, I'm sorry, Russia. Please don't kill me. All right, so, yes, we are back here with the Nintendo Entertainment System version. And I would say that this version probably more closely mirrors that of, of a lot of the home PC versions and whatnot that came out. There actually have been ports of this game to more modern systems, uh, like the DS and Xbox Live Arcade and a few other things like that. But uh, they were based more off of the arcade version. This is, A lot of the home computer versions of the day probably were, were more similar to this one, though I definitely haven't seen them all. So, yeah, so let's take a look at this. This is this definitely still retains the spirit of Green Beret slash Russian Attack. It's uh, still got co-op in it. Definitely, you can see a lot of similarities to Contra in this game, especially in terms of the music and some of the technology in that. So, destroy the enemy secret weapon. It's not rescuing prisoners this time. Kind of cool intro, though. I like that screen. That's pretty neat. And off we go. So, you can see right off the bat here, we've still got a lot of the cannon fodder enemies, but they actually are coming at you at different paces. Some are slow, some are fast, which is a little bit different. You can also see we have a bit more of a beady soundtrack here. We don't just have the, the drums, though I think the drums is kind of cool. It actually makes things feel tense and speedy. And here's the sort of power weapon that you can pick up now. So, a little bit different. It's not a flamethrower, it's a rocket launcher, though it has a similar impact. I imagine they just couldn't figure out or didn't want to bother figuring out how to do the flame effect on the NES. And you see the level design's a little bit different here. So you see that we haven't been encountering very many... Uh, number one, we ran into the mines much earlier in this level. And uh, the mines can actually be a little tricky because you have to jump over them. And this game is actually, because of the NES cross-pad controller, getting the sort of diagonal hit that's needed to successfully execute a jump can be a little tricky. There we go, we're still picking that up. And you see that this game actually shares a lot of sound samples with Contra. So, like, a lot of the weapon pickups are very similar. The music sounds very similar. It's got the trademark Konami pause tone, things like that. But you see so far that we've been dealing with pretty samey enemies. There's the two little variants of the cannon fodder, sort of low-level white shirt guys, and we have the guys who've been dropping weapons, and the game actually has been throwing those annoying ninja kick guys at us earlier. That's who the red guys are. But partially because this was a home system that just didn't have the... Oh, yeah. That just didn't have the, the chutzpah of the arcade machine... There's just not as much going on. There are not as many enemies coming at you at once. And overall, at least at this point, the game is just easier. The, the controls don't feel quite as tight or responsive as the NES version. I'm not quite sure why, but it's a little bit... It's a little bit weird. But it still plays pretty well. I mean... In its own right, this is pretty good. It's just, yeah, it's definitely, I don't know. The arcade version definitely feels a little more frantic, a little more involved. So, and this is where things get really tricky. So you see here, we've got, oh, come on. So you see at this point, we've actually got the sort of enemy wave. We don't get the neat truck animation this time. But a lot of them are ninja guys coming at you in a row, which if you don't have the rocket launcher is pretty friggin' nasty. That's pretty hard to manage because the jumping in this game is so much harder to execute than it was in the arcade edition. That's a little mean. Now obviously if you had access to the rocket launcher there'd be no problem, but... Well, because of the way this checkpoints, you, I'm not necessarily getting access to that. So, all of a sudden, the game gets... That's the interesting part. Sort of as a, as a general rule, when you're progressing through levels, this game is actually easier than the arcade version. 
but when it comes to certain encounters like that, it's actually harder, and it's hard to tell if that's sort of intentional as a different way to ramp things up, or if the game is just badly designed that way, because sort of giving you... Throwing you at a sort of meat grinder scenario, especially with a lot of hard to dodge enemies and not giving you the rocket launcher that it hands you sort of throughout the rest of the level seems kind of cheap, if you ask me. Kind of a, a crappy way to ramp challenge up. So it's kind of weird. In, in some ways this version's easier and in some ways, largely because of limitations, it's actually harder, which is a, a little bit weird. That's kind of why I wanted to talk about both versions. Is, is the concept is certainly there, but it's definitely, uh, there's a few noted differences between them. But I, I enjoy this game. I think it's, wow, I don't know what happened there. Something glitched. Let's see if we can get through that level. But I, I do still enjoy this game, mostly because of its gradual ramp up and just the fact that it's a, it's, it's very simple in concept. It doesn't. It doesn't throw a lot of things at you. It's really just crowd control for the most part. You know, the, the really the basic concepts are quite quite straightforward. So you see here I'm kind of trying to plow ahead and you can you can sort of do that easily. All right, I'm going to try to hold on to this this time. But it definitely doesn't have the the fidelity of the arcade version. There are arcade ports to the NES and to other home systems that did a, a better job than this of emulating the arcade game, I would say Contra is one of them. I think Contra, despite, you know, I think Contra is, is definitely a, a big improvement over this in terms of how closely it emulated the arcade game. I mean, the colors in this are fairly flat. The animation is almost laughable. Like, watching your, your guy try to try to walk there, that's just hysterical compared to the arcade to the arcade game. And yeah, you know, the sky is just this kind of gross flat color. The the mountains in the background are really pretty unimpressive. The stuff like the trucks and the missiles look okay, but it just looks like they didn't use they didn't make really good use of the color palette that they had access to on the NES. And I mean, the NES had a very limited color palette compared to most arcade hardware, but you were some developers were definitely able to do more cool stuff with it than Konami did with this one. I don't know if this was necessarily a rush job of a port. It, it may not have been. It may have just been that the Konami hadn't quite figured out all the intricacies of the NES by this point. But it's still a good version of the game, and if you were someone back in the day who, you know, didn't have an arcade near you or didn't want to throw the amount of money necessary into the arcade version and wanted to play this at home. I, I'd say this was worthy. There was a lot of arcade ports that were just outright awful and kind of, sh you know, basically quick cash-ins that where the developers pretty much should have been ashamed of themselves for making them. This is not one of them. I think this is pretty solid. And that was kind of the idea, right? Back in the day, the, the home console versions of most arcade games were never supposed to be arcade perfect because... The arcade were sort of the, the arcades were sort of the technical showcases because those were the games that cost the operators thousands of dollars to buy. So they were sort of at the time where the real high technology went into, you know, where they spent a lot of money on on graphics and sound and animation and the like. And the home versions were supposed to be, all right, if you want to play this game, but you don't want to, you know maybe pump $50, $60 worth of quarters into it to finish it, and you want to be able to sort of play it on your own schedule, then we'll give you that means, but you're not going to have the crazy fidelity of the arcade version. That's kind of the trade-off. All right, let's see if we can pull this off here. Pile in, you buggers. Uh-oh. Oh, yes! Hey, I pulled it off. All right. Thank you, game. Let's see if we get the crazy... Yay! Yep, we still get that. <laughs> That's hysterical. 
So you see here now it's mixing things up a little, well, kind of. These enemies are still pretty similar. They look different, but their behaviors are pretty similar. This background actually does look a little bit better, but it's still pretty flat. The color scheme is still pretty... This is almost like the equivalent, you know how people say a lot of modern video games are just, oh god, it's just all brown and grays and it's all drab? That's kind of what this was like, really, when you look at it. There was a lot of games on the NES that were much more colorful, especially a lot of Konami games. And this one looks definitely a lot of brown and grays, a lot of drabby colors, kind of like, yeah, this is oppressive and, and sad, and the this definitely has a lot of that to it. Oh, bugger. Gun dude. Oh, God, gun dude. Oh, God, gun dude. He's still hanging around. Oh, you sneaky... Aw, oh, what? Yeah, whatever. But, yeah, there you have it. I... I quite enjoy this game. Uh, I think it's I think it's very good at what it does. I think it's I don't think it's the best. I also think it's far from the worst. It's it's quite competent and competent is still pretty good. Competent is still worth playing in my opinion. So there actually was a sequel to this game that I have never tried. There also was a uh, a reimagining, I guess if you want that came out on on Xbox Live Arcade on I want to say I think it was 2011. It was pretty bad. It was supposed to be Konami's answer to Shadow Complex, and as I understand, it was just not very good at all, and really, it, it shared this name. It was Konami attempting to cash in on branding, but it really wasn't that good. So I, I would kind of skip that, but you can get this on a number of different systems. This did come out on Xbox Live Arcade as well, the, the actual arcade, like a port of the arcade edition. Um, came out on there, and I believe that's still available. And this was available for, yeah, the NES, the arcade, and a whole raft of home computers at the time. And it was also on, I think, the DS, the Game Boy Advance. So th there's a lot of places to get your hands on this game, and it's, it's pretty fun. So, yeah, that is Russian Attack, published and developed by Konami in 1985 and, well, the NES version in 1987. We have been looking at both the arcade and NES versions. And yeah, the NES version is definitely inferior, but but still does a competent job. And it's also teaching me you can destroy mines, which I didn't know about. And the, I think the arcade game is the better way to go. So if you want to play this game, I think that's that's the first way you should try to get it. But but on the NES, we'll, we'll do decently as well. My name has been Parallax Abstraction. Thank you all very much for watching. And I will see you next time.